阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀。佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good, uh, uh, if um,、uh, that, that good day, everyone. Good day. All right, I'm gonna just use this neutral word. Good day, everyone. Good day. All right. Or how we call it in Australia.、Uh, we saw our third guest of honor today.、Uh, how? How are you?、Uh, so today we're going to continue with treaties and response and retributions. Nice, like the thumbs up.、Uh, we are still at chapter thirteen, or、uh, part thirteen of section three.、Uh, we were having a very long and detailed discussion about,、uh, you know. Reckless behavior. Basically, that's what it means. Unscrupulous. You know, without care for others, without care for your、uh, others' well-being, your own well-being. You know,、uh, in terms of mental, in terms of spiritual, in terms of physical. Basically, this is more like a mindset. You know, you you just do whatever you want、um, uh, without allowing yourself to you know have a deeper layer of thinking. You know, let it sink in. So last week we talked about. Like this behavior of blaming, you know, blaming them, blaming your family, blaming outside people, blaming outside、uh, element, but ourselves is because of you know not getting what we want. You know, it's natural to give rise to a little bit of a、uh, you know unhappiness, unsatisfaction, and if we、um, lacking the power of observation or lacking. You know that sense. You know the self-reflection. Then will easily shift hundred percent to to outside. Granted, there's always you know external element that prevents something from happening your way. But、uh, to attribute everything to the outside is a very、uh, irresponsible thing to ourselves. You know because we、um, rob ourselves a chance to actually take power agency. In our life, you know, to, in our own life, you know, if we just assign、uh, so、everything to the external element, then it will, will never be able to grow and get out of that.、Uh, so the, you know, the the, the theory on not the theory, the teachings on how do we get what we want, how things go, you know, our way better more often. Uh, depends on how much merits and fortune you accumulated, and how much merits and fortune you accumulated depends on what kind of mindset you have in your heart. You know what kind of heart did you carry every day?、Um, what kind of person you are? What kind of character you are? You know, in in face of you know not just adversities, in face of、uh, you know smooth sailing、uh, part of your life, you know everything goes well. Are we Cautious? Are we more, you know,、uh, take more initiative to help people in need? Those、uh, little things accumulate into your merits and fortune. Build a full profile on who you are,、uh, and that's how we, you know, perfect ourselves in in the realistic way, you know, one by one, little by little.、Um, you know those. Little things that we may not pay notice, you know, we we like when you saw something, you you face something, immediately, what kind of response did you do, you know, and if our response is something like you know we saw someone, like、um, you know throwing a very、uh, bad look at you, as in like they they look at you dirty, like they look at you angry, you know, not respectful, are we immediately you know taking offense and be angry? Go further and you know trying to escalate it. If we have that kind of mindset or that urge, that means that there's so much things to work on in ourselves. 
why are we allowing an external element to take care of our happiness? You know, it's like you giving up your own control of your life to an entirely external element. That's very sad. It's enslaving yourself. If we have that strong power of, you know, medi- like you know, um, power of observation, that's wisdom, and strong power of, you know, meditation. In, in the sense of you able to, um, you know, not move by the currents of not just the outside world but of your heart. It's very hard. The currents of your heart is huge, like hundred percent more than currents of the outside world. Because outside world, they, there's people, there's this interaction. But inside, the wandering thoughts can just speed up in gazillions of, you know times more than what happens on the outside that's why we have something called imagination stuff like that this thing just you know the nerves are shot very quickly one to another at a split of a second you know the uh, bodhisattva maitreya even mentioned you know one snap of finger finger master ching kong explained the, the teaching right one snap of fingers if we use more than seconds to to, to measure is I don't know how to even describe it in English. It's 37 gazillions or trezillions of um, thoughts pass by per second. You know, that's how powerful it is. The, the currents of the heart is something we need to uh, really sort it out before we can have a substantial change in our real material world. Because everything dependent on the heart, all arise from the heart. You know, all phenomenon arise from the heart. That's what Buddha um, uh, taught us, right, in, in the very beginning and, and in the very end of his you know, teachings as well, you know. Um, so, understand this, then we no longer have that urge or even have that energy to blame. We just need to um, start to learn how to, you know, overt- uh, put a rein you know, put a rope on a horse inside our heart. You know, we call it our thought. We, we just describe it like a horse, like a monkey, monkey mind. The horse keeps uh, uh, untrained horse, right? If anyone here has seen cowboy, you know how hard they have to work to make to tame a horse. You know, because the horse, you know, they just like to run. That's their nature, and our thought is like that. They just like to go anyway. And, and in the end of the day, going nowhere as well. You know. Um, so same for this one. Everything outside, you know, we do understand there is element from the outside that causes us, stop us, provoke us, or tempt tempt us, trick us. Those things happen. Those things will happen, and those things will keep happening. And and if we allow that part to be enlarged the way we see the world. So the world is like that, so that's how it is. Then we'll no longer be able to escape from that vicious cycle. You know, fact is happening. It is happening. We are not like naive. We don't know that that is happening. We are aware this is happening. We understand this is not pleasant. We have anger, you know, when we've been getting uh, beaten up or getting bullied or getting uh, um, cheated, stuff like that. But Eventually, we need to understand you know, all these, you know, currents of our heart um, needs to be quelled sooner or later because the alternative is just escalating into more and more you know, terrible confrontations, and, and our mindset is getting more and more trapped in that bubble of delusions. You know, hatred is a delusion as well, or uh, Greed as well. You know, we thought we can get more and more and more, but end up losing in the end, losing everything in the end because we're too greedy. We're not able to stop, and reflect, and think how how much neglect, uh, how how have we neglected people around us, or how have we, um, you know, not putting other people in our thoughts as well. You know, the needs of others, hence isolating ourselves. So, yeah. So these are people, and then the first half is talking about people, you know, social environment. Second half is talking about natural environment, you know, disasters, 
rain. I'm going to hike today, have a nice, beautiful day in Blue Mountain, and suddenly it rains. Oh my God. I'm going to Japan, I'm, I'm enjoying you know, Kyoto, and beautiful scenery, it rains. Oh. So, yeah, those are like different degrees, right? Some people literally just go to, uh, go to heaven, stuff like that. Or some people like me, sometimes I feel like, oh, why, why do you have to rain? So, you know, those things happen and, and, you know, nature does not have like a time schedule. And, yeah, they have to have rain this time. They have to have this that time. Of course, they have like a certain set of seasons and take turns, but they don't be, they won't be that exact. So, yeah, blaming misfortune on nature is even more silly, right? It's uh, very, very and, and even now we have the consensus of global warming and understanding. Most people will understand that it's the makings of our, you know, civilization. You know, we, we have to be responsible for this happening. We can't just, you know, blaming on the nature. And what we can do is endure and understand that. Adapt. That's, that's how humans do it all the time. Survive. Famine. Die many people. Save as much as you can. Flood, die many people, save as much as you can. Build a shelter, high ground. You can save one, you save one. You can save two, you save two. That's that's the mindset we need to have, not the other way around. Not blame, why this, why that. And if you really want to dig into it, then you have to go back to, you know, the currents of the heart links to the currents of the world. The currents of the heart dictates the currents of the world. The currents of thousands of heart dictates the currents of thousands of world. And so because of this complication, everyone has a different level of thoughts, different currents in their heart. And then hence the world is so crisscross, so mushy and messy and clean and dirty at the same time. And that's our Sahawa. You know, the Sahawa that I mentioned uh, last time is imperfection, lacking. You know, this is the world we have. <coughs> so, yeah cause and effect. Now we move on to something uh, to something about, you know, arguments, fighting, same thing, you still want to get what you want and you use this kind of method to get what you want, uh, but ended up, you know, hurting yourself and others. Um, but the last one is the one I would like to focus on, you know, get, join unlawful gangs and organization. That's one way to see it, but in Chinese, right? <clears throat> it also means like unrowdy crowds, you know, groups of friends that drags you downwards. Like you understand the the word, the, the the crowd that you 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 hang out with, you know, will affect the trajectory of your life. Uh, that's pretty uh, common sense, you know, or the kind of crowd you hang out with um, will affect. Know, the trajectory of your life because you hang out with it every day eventually will affect how you see things how you say things you know your behavior right we're social animals we always try to mimic or you know be part of a group the in group out group mindset you know I want to join this group and if this group is something you know of a uh, hooligans and trying to you know uh, doing some unmeaningful um things that harm a lot of people or, you know, uh, just causing trouble in the local communities, then it's, it's, it's very, it's very bad. Um, that also applies in our, you know, the things we surround ourselves with, media, right? Not just people, not just group, right? Media, what kind of thing you see, what kind of thing you uh, uh, absorb every day. Um, because uh, environment is very important in making or unmaking of us, you know, of our life. You know, uh, good environment like parents really tight on you know children's um, education, especially in terms of not just you know like mannerisms, behaviors, how he, uh, what kind of examples they show in front of the kids. Know, what kind of interaction they have. If the parents and all the elders around this kid has a very strong uh, 
um, principle in and, and, and strong consensus to you know put up the best um, role model to the kid and, and internalize and actually cultivate you know the, the, the level of uh, par- like the, the, the phase of a parents that they want their children to see you know I want to be father than my son wants to see me as I don't want to be that you know run down person you know I was something like that reform then the kids obviously will naturally be affected by you because that's how it is um, we absorb we learn internalize and then we act so that's why it's very important to have a good environment this is a talking about environment to be honest uh, you know, and and if we um, have the very strong foundation on what is right and what is wrong since young, you know, we can't just go gray area and all the, you know, silver linings and stuff like that to kids, right? They were young. We just need to be very clear about, you know, yelling at people is not right. You know, doing, you know, helping people in need is correct. You know, um, if you some some friends in your school were bullying, you know, trying to find a way to help her. For him to you know uh, to get out of that um, crowd, stuff like that, and do what is right. You know, stand stand by stand by the needy, people who needs your help. Uh, stay away from people who actually cause trouble, of people who always instigate stuff. You know, always cause trouble, and um, you know the content of the media that really really harms you. And, um, those things are like really important to have. So, <clears throat> so that's why this is this is something you know we might neglect it in, in the entirety uh, as a society. And um, and if this is neglected and everything was very loose, then we very um, hard to find our um, compass in in society. Everyone's just do whatever they want, but they didn't understand the consequences, did they, un- did they have a very good set of um, standards to live by? You know, law is not enough, it's just a very loose um, set of code that, you know, we can do or we cannot do, but what happens at home, and, you know, what's you know, society ethically, you know, socially, those kind of teachings are still sorely needed, you know, because um, people without standards and uh, uh, without understanding of that, it, it's just very hard to deal with them, uh, very hard to work with them, very hard to um, be their friends, let alone you know, uh, getting close and to be couples and stuff like that. It, it, it's it's just gonna it's just gonna how does it cause more problem problematic family because they don't have a line. In their heart, they don't have a ruler in their heart. What is right, what is wrong, all right? And and they get easily swayed by the outside environment because that's how it is when they were young. You know, just follow whatever your eyes like to see, your mouth likes to taste, your skins like to touch. And if we do that, it becomes animal, right? And even animal has a principle, something they do not do, but more loose than humans. So that's why we, that's why we need to learn about this as well. You know, like what is um, decent, what is not decent. You know, um, for example, like um, those uh, mannerisms and attitudes towards you know, your elders, we still need to have that mindset. You know, just because we, we promote some sort of equality or something does not mean that you can just stay in the classroom and you know, cause discomfort to your students around you you need to still be conscious of that and you know you can make jokes and stuff like that but in the right time you know, not like but but in and stuff like that but yeah it's hard very hard uh, this is not something a teacher will do it one by one to you because there are 50 students or 20 students and there's only one teachers right um, and so replacing that, you know, sense of community is the sense of profit and loss. You know, what brings people together, you know, what binds people together it used to be, you know, stayed more stronger on, you know, familiar ties, more stronger on um, 
obligations to one another, more stronger on um, a sense of duty, sense of community, you know, ser uh, servicing people. But right now it's more loose, not saying that it's non existent, it's very, very loose. You know, it's get more and more, how to say, cold, more distant. You know, technology is not helping as well, you know, with, with all this distraction, right? Everyone just stay in their bubble, you know, tech, techno bubbles, put on the persona and stuff like that. And and eventually um, getting more distant, very few interaction and social. Uh, then we start to, you know, we lose the ability to read people as well, to understand people, you know, heart to heart. There's something I experienced as well, it's not just talking about some distant future, like right now, as in you know, ability to connect to people is such a, such a, you know, important skill to have in your future life. And if our childhood is spent too much on in front of screens and, you know, not with people, you know, I'm, then it, that precious skill set is gone. And we, 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 we find ourselves very hard to express ourselves easily. You can type thousands of letters, perfect, professional and nice. But when you put yourself in a real situation with a human, real human, that's an entirely different thing. You know, you're not just looking at words, you're looking at their expressions, at their um, mannerisms, not just the word they say, say right? They are, they are expressions. And also the, I don't know how to describe it, the vibes, the, the emotion, the, that, you know, situation, the context, read the room in a sense. And um, yeah, those are important things. Those are important to our well-being as well and connection, right? Like, you know, like look at our Buddha, right? When he teach, he just look he just next to his student, right? One to one, not just far away from a phone or something using his uh, magic power and, and saying, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna move today. You guys stay at home. No, no. Of course, it's a different era. They don't have the options, of course. Society is much more smaller back then, uh, to be fair. But yeah. Um, so the question is what brings people together? Uh, this unlawful gangster organization, mafias, hooligans, gangsters, most of them, they either one, they're born by monetary benefits, you know, just pure money. At ruthless you know, mafia, right? You know it. It's ruthless. And uh, we have, you know, those hooligans. You know, they just want to mess around, look cool. Uh, you know, without any like, maybe they have nowhere to go, so they just bond together and, and do that. Um, of course, I would say there are more nuance, nuances in there. You know, they also have their own issues and problems. They find comfort in each other's companionship. But if their behavior is very disruptive, disruptive, if not disrupt, disruptive, if it's disruptive, then, then it's also a problem, right? It's a problem that, you know, we can't just like say, can't put them in jail and solve it. You can't solve that kind of problem because you put them in jail, they're not just staying at Kodigan's level, they become mafia, which is very professional and organized, professional. So yeah, so that's that's the problem. And um, not saying that in ancient times there isn't anything like that. They always have this you know, underground society like that. It's just that if, you know, the society is much more lean towards, you know, profit and loss mindset, then it's, it's very hard to live in that kind of world. It's very mechanical kind of world. Uh, the, the, you know, what time you wake up, what time you sleep, you know, what time, you eat, you know, clock in, clock out, right? We all went to work, right? We have that experience. Clock in, clock out, all right? Eat, sleep, then work, 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 work. And then there's a saying that your company will not be at your funeral, no matter how hard you work, right? The one that will cry, the one that will commemorate you is you know, your close friends, your families, you know, even your pets, if you have a pet but not your company, right? There are special cases, but most of the time they wouldn't. 
right? They are money-making organization. So there's, it really tells us about this, you know, like we make a living, but that's it. Just to make a living, that's it. You know, don't, don't get too um, disillusioned. Uh, I mean, don't get too deluded into thinking, oh yeah, that's it, that's my, my life. Of course, you know, if you got a promotion, all there, have fun, you know, enjoy the chase, enjoy the thrill. Everyone's got to have that, right? Time to time. But remember, it's just a stage. You know, it's a it's a state. It's a it's a stage in our life. That's it. And um, we need we are there are better things, bigger things to go on. And that's why it informs the way we think as well, like the the way we 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 put value on. If we put too much value on our position, status, um, you know, bonus, monetary benefit, then the way we interact with people will always align towards that end. Then you become very unsincere. Or sometimes some people might even get astray by their one of their not so happy, not so wholesome, wandering thoughts. They're trying to undermine other people indirectly, you know, spread some sort of humor or make them look that way, you know, negative light. So those are those are motivated by, you know, nothing other than position, you know, power, benefits. And if we only, if we get too cushy with that kind of thing, it will be very painful when you lose them. So that's why Master Liao Fan, when he said, when you're in high place, always think of yourself in a very low um, place in your life even though you are sitting at the top peak in your career or in your um, field you, know, you may be having thousands of people asking looking towards you deferred towards you but always remember you are you're one of them if not serving them always have that mindset it's not just talk because it keeps you grounded you know, not losing your um, compass of where you're going because those are fleeting things. Those those are amazing, like better than drugs sometimes. But you will go. You will go. You will definitely go away. Um, how do? You, uh, and then what else? Um, yeah. What else? Uh, yeah. Someone in, you know, back in Master Jin Kung uh, uh, time, back in 90s, I think, asked, there is a lot of um, religious leader came to him seeking his advice. Hey, Master, you keep saying that, you know, religion must be united, you know, because we're now talking about our lawful gains, our organization. Why am I talking about religions? Uh, because even in this big organized religion, right, the major religions, they have their own sect sectarian mindset this took a pie like a pie you know this uh, this sect that sect so you know they break into different groups you know, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a appearance under one teacher but um that's unfortunate and, and, and unfortunately it happens a lot not just in the worldly matter but also also in the religious world so and not just one religion, every, you know, even Buddhism as well, you know, big one, they have, they have the issues. So the issue right now is, um, you know, with this kind of, you know, uh, this unity among people, and they sometimes align along, you know, the teachings, some of them is not because of money and benefits, some of them might be, you know, the, um, you know, the way to approach things. But what Master mentioned here is Jie Dang Si is not like that. Like we have Mahayana school, Theravada school, that's fine. Because you have different um, direction in your studies, like biology and physics. If you force them to study together, it's just not working. They have their own path, that's fine. Those are not, you know, unlawful games and organization or Pang Da. You know, those are, those are not forming a clique. Yes, clique, C-I-Q-E, clique. What we're talking about forming a clique in the organization is, like I mentioned, in the, in the pursuit of you know, maximizing your own interests, you know, trying to get money, power, you know, 
trying to get more, you know, more light on your face, you know, so to speak, you know, more more cool and stuff like that. So those happens not just in the worldly math context, also in the religious context, in the religious organization. So people ask Master Ching Kong, with this kind of problem, you know, a lot of conflicts between people, what, how, how can we even think, conceive of harmonies, peace among other religions? Um, that was like back in 1999, I think. He said that uh, when he was in Sydney, oh, 1998 maybe, uh, he had a Catholic priest asking him, you know, I'm really doubting how can we, um, that was back in the 90s, right? How do we uh, even achieve a uh, you know, multi-faith harmony uh, like that? And uh, I helped, I, Master Chico told him, this is about education, you know, this is about the mindset, you know, mindset. And mindset, to change the mindset, it takes really, really long time. Not one person's mindset, a whole collective group. It, it, it needs time. And what's the goal of educating people is to change their mindset for something positive, you know. And and it has to start with small batches of people who really, really, really get it and really practice it, practice what they preach. Then start to prove, you know, by their actions, by their you know, initiatives. Only then it will spread. You know. Like Buddha, right? We talk about Buddha story. The five bhikkhu, you know, in the in the um, deer park, you know, uh, he talked to the five bhikkhu, and from five bhikkhu, you know, they all gain enlightenment, arahant, and they go out and repeat the teachings, you know, and each five of them brings ten, so fifty. Five becomes fifty, and so this is how it works. Um, Confucius, you know, when he gone through the, you know, different states back in the preaching China, right? Yeah, there are many countries in China. And, um, you know, he went back to many countries and many students followed him. And then he still went back to his school, went his uh, hometown in the Lu, the country of Lu, and teach, you know, small, always start small, start local and then do well in that little patch of uh, land and people and, and, and let things grow on its own, you know, do your job. Buddha didn't say, oh, I want to do this, that, 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 that. I do not think so. He, he just get the most important thing out first, the principle, the learning, the teaching, the discipline, the, the day-to-day practice and stuff like that. And then any issues they ask and then they just just learn and then when Buddha's thing is time then go out you know you already gain arahat that means you already have uh, not swayed by uh, the currents of the world your heart has you have a strong hold over yourself you know you no longer be deluded uh, by the uh, false view you know by the false uh, emotions and stuff like that you are clear you have clarity you gain wisdom hence clarity um, and so you can go out you know, teach others you know, otherwise stay close to the teacher the teacher will point out the issues so this is how it works you know that that's already in the history and it's already been happening so that's how we should do as well I mean that's how, how it, it, it really works you know if we, if we bring a huge you know group of people in one go you know they might have an impact of like promotion might be a marketing impact. Everyone heard of it, but long term, you know, if there's no consistent group of people staying together and actually learn, actually, you know, um, uh, taking off the edge from one another, we call it mohe. We try and we call it merging, fusing with each other. You know, goods and bads. Take out the bad, merge the good. You know. Uh, any weakness and anything you know, each other you know, they take care of each other you know. point out the errors point out the issues you know. those are actually like legit practice groups and, and they stay together for tens of years you know, years and years 
only then you have some sort of um, staying effect. Otherwise, if you bring like uh, thousands of people at once, you know, who has no foundations or anything, all you do is um, having, a, having a big sermon, big talk, and then that's it. Everyone go back to their life and continue that, what they're doing. Um, that's not to say we shouldn't have that kind of event. We, we did have that, right? And But you can see that the staying power is not there. You know, uh, say compared to what we have done in Lujiang, that was after Master Qingko mentioned that it was in China. You know, that was back then, in early the uh, 2008. You know, very early time, and they were quite open back then. They opened to you know, have a piece of patch of land for them to uh, like to prove to the United Nations that we can change, people can change for better, uh, because they have been doing all this peace work, peace building across the world, but nothing goes well. You know, everyone still go back to forming cliques, fighting over, same thing, you know, money, power, after disposing the dictator, the one that disposed the dictator becomes the dictator. That's the story of the African world and pretty much everywhere. Same goes for even the first world, right? Like the, the politicians vote them out and then they went in and becomes the same person again or something like that, to that effect. So it makes people lost faith. In the loose faith in the you know, in the world, so we need to. Master Shingo said this is a crisis of faith, right? So we gotta have to. Uh, like he's, he literally said, I was forced because a monk shouldn't be doing this thing. He should be focusing on teaching the Dharma. But because of the timing, the right condition, you know, the the level of influence he has as well, he needs to do something to prove that it it, 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 it actually can works. Because when he talked about this uh, in the Singapore back in 90s, 19, 1999, I think, uh, he already has done you know, the hard work of uniting nine religions in the country, which never happened before. Back then, everyone doing their own thing. They didn't argue, but they're doing their own thing. They were not together. Now they're together, uh, gathering, talking about things, you know, talking about sharing about what they learned, like what we have, like a study group. So this is very rare. And, and and so everyone say that this man actually can do it. And Master went to China and actually do it with you know. Right now we call it Master Chung the back then it was Teacher Chai, Mr. Chai. So they built a, a kind of like an experimental point in a village. It's not really experiment in a sciencey way. It's just a simple, you know, implementation of what they learned from the past how the past, the ancient Chinese did, educating the mass, right? Go there, the teacher go in to live, eat, sleep, wash, do whatever the, the people are doing. And, you know, of course they have their own class because they are teachers. And they literally need to practice every single class from the guidelines of being a good person or Di Zigui. As an example, clause by clause, they do it. And they don't just do it in front, like they do it when they're outside. That's why they need to have someone like Teacher Chai who is very into this and very, you know, internalizing the teachings and guiding other teachers along. You know, he's kind of like a lead, like principal in a sense, and trying to help, you know, like make sure the standard is there. You know, everyone's actually behaving according to these guidelines, of uh, being a good person. You know, that's what this way means. How do we be a decent person? You know, greet people, greeting to people, and actually helping the people. The way you walk, the way you um, move. In Buddha precepts, same thing. And when you start to be a monk, always you need to learn about how to move about. The way the way you move, the way you sit, the way you sleep, the way you eat. Those things are called mindfulness, and from beginning is always forced and then in the end you become more and more natural so those those are education you know, education is not just sitting there you know boring old lectures talking about point one point two point three these are one way to educate real education is 3d full surrounds you know full surroundings like when you go to movies you immerse yourself in the movie you get touched, you cry, you sleep, 
not sorry, you sleep, yeah, you sleep when you're really tired. You laugh and you cry. That's how you educate people. You move the hearts, string them into the right direction, you know. Uh, a good teacher will always help them to, you know, tidy up the messy currents. Our mind is messy. When you have a good teacher or when you have a good teaching, it calms and soothes, soothes your mind. And then that your, 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 your messy current naturally realigns itself and your mind getting clearer and clearer and clearer. You're getting more and more able to control all your emotions, all your anger. Rather than saying control, more in tune. You understand how it works. You understand how how your limits. You understand, you know, you're more understanding of yourself, hence you're more understanding of others. So that's education. That's it's an art. But it's very lot, it's very patient. You need to be very patient and always, you know, have an eye inward inwards, looking inwards. You don't have to verbalize it, just need to look inwards. And then when you when you look at other people, it's always an opportunity to adjust. How do I do this? How do I do this better? So yeah, back to the point though. Mm. The opposite of this, you know, forming a clique for a small group interest is have a mindset of Tian Xia, you know, helping everyone. Always want to always have that heart to help everyone. Always have the heart to serve, you know, for the greater good. Not just talking, not just raising the flag, but literally, you know, everything you say, you think, your way of thinking, the the, the way you formulate your thinking is not um, limited by self-interest. We're not fools, we understand that we, we need to stand on our ground before we can help others. But we always stand on our ground in order to help others, not just for the sake of maximizing whatever enjoyment we have. That's level two. That's how you become a better human being. Because you can carry more people along. And cliques form because everyone are, you know, temporarily aligned their interests together just to get, you know, most out of whatever is in front of them. You know, countries, I mean this country they have this you know, political power in, in vacant, happen to have military power and stuff, they form this clique. So they take over the place, you know, take over the mine, take over the, the productions, and 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 you know, maximize the benefit. You know, try to enjoy as much as they can, extract as much as they can before the next person overthrows them. So that kind of mindset is toxic. It's poisonous, and it's not helping themselves either. You know, how long can you enjoy? You're gonna die anyway, and the way you die is not gonna be good. Right? We know karma. And if if not you're being disposed of, it would you will be punished because of you know neglect neglect neglecting your duty as a leader. So that's one thing. Um, understand cause and effect. Understand how we actually get merits and fortune. That's why you have seen a lot of good example of people in the past or even now, like you know, Madam Shooter, you know were willing to live in a very low, she's from Singapore, her age is 100 plus. She lives in a very low cost apartment, you know, her food and everything was donated and she used all this food donated to her to help people who are 20 years younger than her. She can, she can walk longer, she can still walk and jump and dance at the age of 100 plus and taking care of the 80s, people in their 80s. That's how powerful it is. And she's waiting to live in a very simple life, you know, just eat a very salad or porridge, like barely eating three meals, like two meals, but she feel very healthy. That's that's the modern example of a sage. Um, Master Jingo met him before when, like, during this time, actually. So the point is, you know, how people willing to live in a lower, you know, material comfort. You know, they want to lower their material comfort. They literally live in a very simple, simple, simple life. Uh, for most people, like just enough to get by and comfortably get by is always a good, 
standard to have. Uh, and if anything else beyond that, uh, always strive to help others. Uh, because, you know, we, we need to go beyond this little body and it's not helping if we just indulge in it. And, and the happiness we got from it is always temporal and it will always come back and bite us if we overindulge like you know not sleeping enough spending too much energy chasing after these trails or whatever the things that make you very excited no longer excites you that's the nature of it you know, those those are only excitement excitement is always short pulse impulsive temporal um, if a person will practice the Dharma, practice the path, should always remind himself. You know, the example shown by Buddha, example shown by um, you know, all these sages, you know, Taoist monk as well, they all live in mountains, they all live very frugally, even, you know, by our worldly eyes, impoverished, you know, back for foods, sleep by the roadside. But they are very happy, and um, we have to understand those people if they really, you know, put the effort. Like if they really transform, like in our worldly mindset, they can be kings, CEOs, multinational. They can own three, five companies, no problem, because based on the wisdom, like Buddha, he can easily take over the entire continent of India. That is not a problem. He has that level of attraction. Uh, attractiveness as a leader, charismatic leader. He can, he can just do that. That's not the question. The question is, it's not helping anyone, not helping himself, not helping others in the long run. And of course, he's not showing, that's not his mission. So, um, so we understand those wise, you know, powerful individuals willing to let go of these comforts and you know, comfort of luxurious life which they can acquire easily if they want to but they're willing to live a very impoverished life because uh, they want to improve their spiritual uh, well-being you know, and to improve spiritual well-being you cannot have too much enjoyment luxurious uh, for normal people right for Buddha I'm pretty sure he can still be very spiritual even though he's a king but the problem is he needs to do a good example to us and for, for most of us right we usually get too indulgent when we you know have too much influence too much power too much wealth things getting too easy for us then we start to fall apart um, we only only you know how, how you fare with sometimes you don't even know until it happens and when it happens you don't realize how easily is it for you to fall into that, you know, um, wasteful habit, into that, you know, arrogance and stuff like that? Because, you know, these things happens a little bit by a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay. We're almost there. Hmm. Okay, that's. It's very sensitive, yeah. Oh my god, my wife told me that, my husband told me that. Don't listen to your mom, stuff like that. To rely on gossip, to consider wicked proposal from one's spouse. To turn one's back to the teaching of mothers and fathers, okay. So, yeah, even Master is aware of this, um, you know, in modern context. Uh, he's talking about, uh, you know, it's very easy to listen to your other half than listen to your parents. I mean, of course, right? You, you'd be like, uh, if your if your wife said yeah I want this you know I want I want uh, you know I want oh, I want to go and eat in the middle of the night stuff like that your parents are like it's so late already why do you eat in the middle of the night one o'clock you know you need to rest of course you'd be like yeah we want to go and have fun so <sighs> that's a very childish way of putting it but the point is um, the logic behind this is of course you know parents or elders they usually have longer experience in life and they, they kind of know you know what's important or not and that's 
from that point of view. Uh, in modern society, of course, we understand um, that's not always the case. You know, people who see a bigger world out there are not necessarily the elders, but um, it's, more, it's a more complex society, right? And we understand that. Um, so we can use a different way to look at this. One spouse means someone very close to you, someone that you know very easily use you use emotion rather than rationality to deal with. Outside people, no problem. Colleague, no problem, because they're just work friends. And they can be friends, but they just work friends. But your own family, your own spouse, and stuff like that, especially your own spouse, right? Every day, you know, looking at each other, of course. Uh, it's very easy to use emotion rather than uh, what is right, what is wrong. It's just what you, you know, what suits, what makes you happy. Um, those balance needs to be there. Uh, so this is trying to balance against it because if you just follow the whims um, of the other half, then it's not going to help. You know, it's not helping anyone uh, to. To have a better life, um, the closer you are to that person, the more rational you need to have. Rational means that not saying that you should be cold, hard, rational. Not not that kind of rational. It's just you gotta know where the line. I mean, you gotta know where it stops. You know, like yeah, yeah, I can't indulge in this. You know, even though we are cool and all that, and we're close, maybe husband and wife stuff, but we can't keep doing that. Um, yeah. So it's very easy to say it. It's very hard to do it, right? Yeah. Um, it depends on our on our cultivation, and uh, no parents do not. No parents uh, does not uh, like love their kids. You know, all parents love their kids, and. Um, trying to get to the point, sorry. This is not something I can just say it. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 okay. So, in this case, we are putting the context. We can set the standard according to the sages. Back then, maybe the parents are more, you know, brought up in a more, you know, like Confucius way and more virtuous way. Uh, no, not as money-minded as it is right now. Because right now I've seen quite a bit, like, you know, the kids are mu much more zen, but the parents are even more, like, money-minded. So that's the problem, all right? Of course, you don't follow that kind of advice. Like some of them even move look far away from that. That's, that's why rationality, right? You need to be rational, what is right, what is wrong. And nowadays, because you know there is so much thing happening, it's no longer that mindset of you know, really not all of them. Of course, they always want, always listen, and their wisdom in your parents' words, listen, listen to them. But always, uh, uh, there are cases, more cases of you know, like parents who just say, oh, you just need to you know, go and uh, earn more money." Why do you even waste your time listening to Dharma? Why do you even waste your time, uh, you know, helping people, volunteering, you know? If they have that kind of mindset, that means they don't understand cause and effect. They are not, they are not in that wavelength, unfortunately. That then, then it becomes our duty to help them. Uh, so, instead of saying parents, we're saying sages, you know? Do not turn one's back to the teaching of sages, you know, Buddha, Bodhisattva. Their teachings are permanent, eternal, in a way of the standard is there. It's always there. They will not change just because you are his student, or wife, husband. You know. So that's better. You know. That's what Master Ching would propose. Which I don't gossip or consider we can propose one spouse. That's still happening, especially in terms of inheritance. In terms of you know like you know all this family thing you know the uh, um, inheritance money again money that thing that's why Chinese when they describe money right 
when they write the word money, it's you know gold at the left side, and the right side is knife. There's two knife next to the gold. Why two knife? One knife you only stab the air. Two knife you stab each other. That's money. Chen. So very careful. Be very careful. And and this gossip or we can propose either come out of mischievous, just pure mischievous, or jealousy, or you know trying to compare, you know, trying to trying to you know trying to cause rift between families. Um, sometimes it's the other way around, right? Your own family trying to cross bridge between husband and wife. So that's all what it means by we can propose it from one spouse, one's family, one spouse. Because usually they always um, follow a very narrow mindset, right? If you use it in, in ancient times, the tendency of the woman, because they lack lacking the access to the proper education, in, 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 even in like Confucius teaching and stuff, they are not you know, properly educated, right? They don't have that system. So they tend to think only in the context of their family. That's it. Their, their son, their daughter, you know. And if you go into a bigger family which a man has can have two and san qi si jie, three wives, four wives, and you have all the Chinese drama material ready for you. You know, all these shows you're watching, how they fight each other, and the, the more virtuous but you know less status one were bullied, you know, stuff like that. Of course, real life is different, but more or less this happens. And then you look at the emperor's, you know, concubine, and it's even more clear. So back then, you know, man has more access to it, and they are usually more, like, more access to this teaching of the sages. So they are able to think in a larger horizon. They're not as petty. So put it in modern times, it's different. Everyone, even though they have access to everything, they don't really touch this teaching anymore. You know, they will all follow the, the, the different set of mindset. You know, materialism, you know, materialistic mindset. Now it's a bit better, but maybe back then. But um, the point is. Um, Small, small in the sin, right? Just that kind petty mindset, right? Do not rely on the petty mindset. Rely on the mindset of uh, the boundless heart, mindset of people who are actually trying to benefit everyone. Um, that's the whole point of this teaching. And of course, if your parents are someone who is always, you know, generous and loving, you will know. Even they are not, you know, you don't argue with them. You just Listen and let them say what they say, and then you move on and live a good life. Uh, pretty sure a lot of people would know by then. Some people just don't know when they're young because they were just in that environment. Like the woman back then, they only know that much. They were, that's all they know, right? But when they get to see a bigger world, like when kids grow up, get to see a bigger world, and they understand, you know, how things really are, you know, without too opinionated. They, this, they are wise. They're not. They are not stuck on one side. They see things as they are. It is what it is. Then they become more understanding. They become more compassionate. So if the parents are the kind of person, more you know, compassionate, understanding, patient, uh, you will know. You will do very. You will do very well listening to them. If they are not, they are very you know, uh, petty minded and stuff like that. You know. Still listen, they, they, they do it out of their, their love for you. That is, is one thing for real. A normal family, of course. You know, minus the mentally ill one, unfortunate one. You know, there are cases like that. The normal one, no, majority of family, parents will always think the best for their children. So it does not harm to have a, have a listen. But do not blindly follow. Because a lot of us already broke our connection with the teachings of the sages. And even back then, the, those little village thinking mindset as well is also problematic. Uh, if they are not properly guided by people with a bit broader mind, they are pure, they are more na naive, but they are more easily pliable. If there's someone with um, ulterior motive, they can just 
invoke them. Look at US, right? Salem witch trial. Look at that. Yeah, that is some ugly history that I have heard of. How? They are not. They are not bad people. They are like pure people, very pliant, very um, pious. But all it takes is one person or two person who really have to use their word in a way that invoke a sort of mock uh, mindset. So that's how you know that you know you know be very careful with your words. But back to this one. That's why the power of gossip and wicked proposal is very dangerous. If you say something, you know that sounds okay, but then they they change the meaning by changing the context. Same word but put it in a different context. It sounds wrong. Then it will lead to this kind of witch witch hunting. You know, that kind of witch hunting means in a group, everyone's pointing towards that one person, even though they did nothing wrong. Out of jealousy or out of personally motivated stuff. So that's very bad. Okay. All right, I'll stop here, guys. Thank you so much. Um, anyone has anything else to share? <coughs> How are you? Late, late, late work again. Melinda, if nothing, then we'll end this. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, bro. Oh good, oh, good, oh, good. oh good bro okay yeah all right all right okay let's end this um oh there's so many okay so dedication of merits and then 10 times amitofu may the merits and virtue adorn the buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below may those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. 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 Thank you guys, have a good day ahead and a good night.